our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. If you believe, they put a man on the moon. Man on the moon. Music in space is something very important uh, for the morale of the crew and for the, the psychological support of the crew. Good morning, Atlantis. This is Michael Stipe from REM. Music in space is so important, in fact, that the shuttle astronauts were famously serenaded every morning from the ground. Good morning, Atlantis. This is Elton John. We wish you much success on your mission. Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield remembers it well. The music for the space shuttle crew was played, in fact, at the moment they woke up. It was in place of an alarm clock. They'd be sound asleep. In fact, when I was asleep on the shuttle, the first thing you'd hear would be the little click of the uh, communication system sort of uh, connecting. And then out of these li little tiny cheap speakers on the space shuttle, you would start hearing music blaring through the space shuttle to wake you up. Good morning, guys. Wake up. European Space Agency astronaut Frank de Vinner spent six months as commander of the International Space Station. My favorite music would be uh, rock and roll uh, because it's uh, upbeat, it gives you energy, it uh, brings you into a good mood. I, I like to listen to it uh, as well. So of course we have all the rock and roll artists uh, from my youth uh, in uh, Flanders and Belgium, like uh, the Kroeners or uh, Raymond van het Groenewald, but I also listen to uh, Bruce Springsteen, uh, The Kings. Uh, you have uh, Dire Straits, for example. Uh, these were the type of music that I, I would take with me. Sometimes the astronauts themselves make the music. <laughs> OK, <laughs> you believe it. <laughs> Issa's Thomas Reiter jammed with Chris Hadfield on the Mir space station. Thomas Reiter is a good guitar player. He plays classical guitar. Uh, and there was an old guitar on the Russian space station Mir. So we played uh, lots of tunes that we all knew, tunes that were special to us. For many astronauts, music is a link back to life on Earth, whereas some astronomers take musical inspiration from the stars themselves. Since the time of Plato, stargazing scientists have drawn links between the arrangement of the constellations and the arrangement of music. In recent years, actual radio and plasma waves have been transposed to make audible sound. Philippe Zarka from the Observatory of Paris in Meudon is one of those astronomers who experiments with the sounds of space. We can faithfully take the energy received from the radio waves from the sun and turn it into an image and sound. Obviously it isn't a real sound because there's mostly a vacuum between us and the sun and sound doesn't travel in a vacuum. But we can make an image and sound, so here for example is an image of a solar eruption, the ejection of highly accelerated electrons that shoot through the corona. Zarka has transposed electromagnetic activity from sources all around the solar system. His aim is to help the public understand the sun, the planets and the Milky Way a little better. The audible results can be quite surprising. When we get near the poles of Saturn, we can have radio wave emissions with a very special structure, which give a very structured sound. De temps en temps, 
Sometimes the electron beams produced between Io and Jupiter are so fast that we really don't have to compress time, and you have the impression of hearing birds singing, which is in fact the beams of electrons traveling between Io and Jupiter. Look deeper into the Milky Way and radio telescopes pick up signals from pulsars, dead stars that have collapsed dramatically from a million kilometers in diameter to just 20 kilometers in diameter, spinning ever faster as they contract. The pulsar that we're going to hear, which is in the giraffe constellation, spins around every two thirds of a second. The rotation rate of these pulsars can go up to a thousand or several thousand per second, what we call millisecond pulsars. And there's an observation of a cluster of stars at the edge of our galaxy that's been transposed into sound. And we can hear a kind of cosmic symphony, which is made up of the layers of signals coming from 20 odd pulsars. That cosmic symphony is one that struck a chord with the musicians of Kronos Quartet. They worked with composer Terry Riley and astrophysicist Don Gannett to create a piece called Sun Rings. It integrates the same kind of audio transpositions developed by Philippe Zarka, with Riley taking fragments of melody from the space observations and turning them into musical themes. Sun Rings started when we got a call from the arts program director at NASA. And his question was whether Kronos would be interested <clears throat> in including some of the sounds recorded on the Voyager expeditions in our concerts. For Kronos, creating sun rings was like a voyage in space. I have quite a large collection of sounds of insects and birds and animals and various aspects of nature from all over the world. And when I heard that recording from NASA, I realized there's another part of nature that I've never heard before. There were like whistlers, there were um, these kind of um, bizarre uh, animal-like shrieks. <laughs> it was amazing because it, it, it really sounded to me like there was an entire universe of sonic information that was recorded. Up and I see the sun and it's, it, it looks like a huge cell, a living cell. And it, it's thoroughly inspiring every time I get to look at that. For astronauts in orbit, the otherworldly feeling of weightlessness is matched by a strange mix of sounds. Some become familiar, others are unique and live with you for a lifetime. Where it's really different is when you're outside on a spacewalk, where you're alone inside your spacesuit, you're alone in the universe. And uh, because you're down at a low pressure, it gets whisper quiet. 
and the dominant sound that you hear, the, the, the sound that really uh, overpowers everything else is just the sound of your own breath. space station and when we are in the sun it heats up when we are in the cold it uh, it shrinks down a little bit so also there you had uh, sometimes these metallic noises that came uh, out of the nowhere uh, in the space station in the beginning it's a little bit strange to say oh what's happening here as you are holding on to the outside of a spaceship and watching the world roll by beside you in, in, in a visual symphony of its own, you are just very aware of, of your own life. Now, of course, entering the atmosphere at the speed of Mach 25, five times the speed of sound, uh, it really makes a hell of noise in, in the cabin. Uh, you can also hear in the cabin the noise of the, the reactors, the jets firing to stabilize the vehicle and to control uh, the vehicle. Uh, so this is also something that is uh, spectacular. And of course, this happens while you're in a kind of a fireball because the vehicle heats up at the outside to about 2,000, 2,500 degrees centigrade. So it's really like a fireball that you see through the windows and then this uh, screaming noise that is coming from the air floating by. It's, it's quite spectacular. <laughs> 